Right, hi everyone. Welcome to uh, the third and final webinar in this series um, that is all about 12 top tips of how you can be really interactive in Lynx Whiteboard. So uh, tips for yourselves, tips for teachers on how to make presentations and then get students involved with those presentations, whether that's up on the large screen or whether that's using Lynx Whiteboard on their devices where you can send files to them. Um, so we've got the final uh, four to do, and I'll be starting in a moment. So I'm Gareth Middleton. I was the primary school teacher for 24 years, if you, this is your first time attending. And my colleague is Ginny Crozer. Hi everybody and welcome to our final session. So like Gareth said, my name is Julie Fraser. Um, like Gareth, I was a, teach, a primary school teacher for just over 12 years. And um, so hopefully um, you'll learn some good top tips from myself and Gareth. We've got breadth of knowledge <laughs> um, regarding sort of the teaching and using links. So hopefully um, you'll find this really interesting. Um, so I'm going to pass over to Gareth and he can uh, show you the next tip in our series. All right, thank you, Jilly. And as I mentioned just before, um, we will be doing some extra webinars once a month going forward, probably starting around November time. And we'd love to hear from you on what you'd like those webinars to be on, whether that's the Clever Touch Impact screens, a Links Whiteboard, or any of the other software that we bundle with our screens. So, Links. Um, my first top tip is all about an actual extra app that you can download. So it's separate to Links Whiteboard, but you get it from the Links Whiteboard uh, web page, as I'll show you in a moment. So I'm just going to start to share my screen with sound today. And here we are. We're on linkscloud.app. And this extra app is the Lynx screen recorder. It allows you to record whatever it is that you're doing on your device and make little videos of your presentations. So um, here I am at linkscloud.app. I can sign into my account. I don't have to, we've got the download section there, but just to remind you that when you want to sign into Lynx, you've got single uh, click sign in for all of these areas, plus a QR code if you've got Lynx whiteboard on uh, one of your phones, for example, where you can scan a QR code, or I could just use my email address as I always do, so I'm going to sign in there. So I'm into my account now. Um, if I go to the download area and I want to get the link screen recorder, all I have to do is scroll down, good way of reminding you where you can get links whiteboard from, from all of these app stores here. And down here it says more downloads. If I click on that, it extends the page and down here. Here it is, the link screen recorder. So you can get the link screen recorder for Windows devices, MacBooks, and Linux, and Android devices as well, I believe. So um, you just download the version you want straight from there. Um, when you download it, you can then pin it to your toolbar, as I've done. Here it is. I'm just going to activate it now. That's the little icon for the link screen recorder. You can also get it as an app on the Clever Touch screens. And there it is. It's just a little pop up. Now, if I go to links itself, this page here will help me uh, explain what all of these buttons do. So the pin means that you can pin the link, uh, the link screen recorder to the desktop layer. You've got the microphone that you can you can toggle on and off. You can start recording by hitting the circle and you can close the app. Once it is recording, you get a, um, a timer that records the length of your um, recording and you can stop the recording at any time as well there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize links and, that, and we're going to pin this to this layer there and I'll turn on the microphone and we can start um, to record when I click here. So hopefully this won't boot off the sharing that I'm doing. Chili will keep me posted. It sometimes uh, does in Zoom here. You me? Hey, Fever. See them still in the UK. So I'm recording now, including me blowing my nose. But what I can do is I can go to any of my um, apps. I don't have to just be in 
uh, links. So I could be using Word. I could be modelling for the children the writing of a story. So once upon a time, as we say in English, to start off a fairy tale. So I could model some writing or I could be modelling me moving around the web. It's recording all of this as I go. And then when I've finished making my recording, all I have to do is stop the video and it will want to save it for me. So if I decide to save it on my desktop, and I'm going to call this links recording one. And you'll see the recording appears there on my desktop. I can then copy that recording, go back into links, and I can paste it onto the page here. So I can uh, shrink that down. But usually what happens is when you first play it, as you'll see, and you'll hear my voice, it sometimes uh, does in Zoom here. Excuse me. <laughs> hey, Fever. Season still in the UK. So I'm recording now. There we go. Pause that down. So um, it usually plays it as full screen as it can, but you can shrink it down. So now if I come and play it, Oh, including me blowing my nose. <laughs> so um, you can have it played small or you can zoom into it and have it full screen as well whenever you want to. So um, one use for this could be to make a little tutorial video for something that you're doing with the children. So let's say I'm doing something on handwriting and I want to demonstrate how to get these joins to work. So um, if I go back to the link screen recorder, in fact, because I've got it toggled here, I can just click there get it to come on let's start recording there we go and now i'm going to use my pen tools here to start to record what the children need to do so we're going to do the letter o go across with the bridge and make my i with the r we start at the bottom do the r across with the bridge and do the a with the v we swoop into the e and with the w we go across with the bridge to the I. So I've demonstrated those four joints. So back on the link screen recorder, I'll stop the recording. This time I'm going to call it link screen recording two and we'll save it on the desktop again. And now if we go back to my desktop, we can grab link screen recording two, copy it back into links and paste and when the uh, video is playing and it will go full go yeah. and now i'm going to use my pen tools here to start to record what the children need to do so we're going to do the letter o now what you can see is over here there is a loop uh, toggle so that video can keep playing in a loop over and over and over again so it saves these recordings as an mp4 file so you can just drop them into a links presentation or you could um, upload them onto a school YouTube channel or onto a school website. And that way you can create um, videos of your presentation. So if ever we need to do remote learning again, we can have a bank of, of resources ready to go. OK, so that's the end of tip number one today. Uh, tip um, nine, I believe, um, all about the link screen recorder. Over to you, Jilly. Thank you very much, Gary. Um, I'm just going to also share my screen here with you all. Hopefully, Gareth will give me a little thumbs up once it is sharing and we can all see it. Fingers crossed. Perfect. Thank you, Gary. So my 10th um, top tip, I believe, which is our second one for today, is creating a graph using the different line tools that are available in the pen within Link's whiteboard. So I've got a bit of a template up here already. I've already dropped on a background, which if you remember from previous sessions, you can go into your content file and find those backgrounds are really useful and they're completely editable as well. So you can make those squares as big or as small as you would like. Um, I've also popped on just to be ready, a couple of my titles. So I've got down here, I've got my days. And then over here, I'm going to have the amount of exercise. And I think I might just rotate that. So if I just click on that one, use the little steering wheel there, that little node, I can rotate it that way. 
So all I need to do now is to pop my axes on for my grid. So I'm going to go into my pen tool down here on the bottom where our tools are. So clicking on the pen and you can see there's three different pens there that are open and one eraser. Now the pens take you to the exact same menu. It will just take you to a different starting point. So for example, if I start here with the highlighter, it takes me to there and then that will take me to the mask recognition tool. We've got two there. I've changed those. So um, you can go in and you can change the width, the color that you would like those to be as well. So I'm going to click on this one. I'll keep it probably around there. I think that color should show up quite nicely on the pale background. And I'm going to go into our line tool there. So you can just see, I've got my colors selected and got the width. So on my straight line, I can create my axes. So I can create my X axes going right across. Just like so. And then my Y axis coming down as well. Don't worry if it's not completely on the grid because you can always go back into the little select tool, select your line. And you can move it up and down to position it exactly where you'd like to. You can also adjust the length of those nodes. Have them longer and shorter. There we go. So I'm happy with those two axes that I have on there. So now I just need to label that the what I want to put on. So I'm thinking about the amount of exercise we've completed over the week. So I'm going to pop on my days. Now in the pen tools down here at the bottom, again, you can just choose to write your answers. We do also have the text um, pen here. So if I click on it, for example, and we'll have it black, I think. And then if I go and click onto my board, and I write man, short for Monday. There we go. You can see it converts it into text for me. And what I can also do straight away, I can double click on that. If I wanted to shrink it, I can put additional text into it. If I'd made a spelling mistake, I can use that little steering wheel to straighten it up. I can make it larger, smaller, whatever it is to suit. So I'm going to leave that about there. So you can continue to use the text tool. Um, you can even change the text and the colors, or you can just use one of the pens. We've got the ink pen and the fine tip there pen um, to continue to write. So I'll do our next one. So we've got Monday, we've got Tuesday, got Wednesday, got Thursday, we've got Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I've labeled the days of the week at the bottom there. And now I just need to write in my numbers going up the top. And again, you can use the pen, you can use the text tool, you can even use the math tool, which will recognize the numbers. So for example, if I write here, so I'll go, I've got my zero, and we've looked at the math tool previously that will sometimes calculate those equations as well. Now with the math tool, I can't go back in and edit them because it creates like a little image, but, I can move these around still on the board um, to make it nice and neat. So 20, 25. And the last one, 30 minutes up there. So I can, by clicking on my little hand, I can move those so I make them nice and neat to where I'd like it to go. Okay, so now, we are ready to complete and put our information in. 
So again, down to my line tool, and I want it to be a line graph. So I'm going to choose the elbow. And we'll keep that color and that thickness. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to draw, and it doesn't matter where you start, it's going to draw a line straight across. And what you'll notice is you'll be like, oh, but I thought it was an elbow. It looks the same as a straight line. However, this time when you go into the little cursor, into the select, and I click on it, and as always on an item that you pop on, you get the floating toolbar where you can change your color and whether it's a dotted line. I've got here the little icon for my um, elbow. And you can change the different line types, but it's this part here, the points, that's really important. So I'm going to add additional points and you can see it's adding those extra nodes on there. So now if I use my cursor and I can say, well, on Monday, I only did 10 minutes of exercise. Tuesday was quite busy, maybe 25 minutes. Wednesday, oh, we managed 30 on Wednesday. Then Thursday, we might be feeling a little bit tired. So maybe only 15. Friday, might have done 20. Saturday, oh, I might have just done 10 again. And on Sunday, we had a really lazy day. We didn't do any exercise at all. So you can see how quick and simple it is to create that grid and that graph to show and plot lots of different pieces of data. You can then also have those discussions with your pupils or your students of which day did we do the most exercise? Which day did we do the least amount of exercise? What was the average amount? All those different things that you can do with it. And another thing that you can do, so if I click on my graph here again and my floating toolbar pops up, I can then change it into a curve. So it's more of that frequency there. So you can see that nice smooth curve of my graph. And again, even on that, you can change those points and you can change back into the elbow, into that line tool there as well. So hopefully I'm gonna stop share my screen there. That will have given you a little, a little bit of uh, information then to go back to your clients and things and share that knowledge. So hopefully you've enjoyed that one. If you do have any questions, do drop it into the chat and I am going to pass back to Gareth for his next top tip. Over to you, Gareth. Thank you, Jay. That was great. Um, all downhill on your graph there for the exercise. Oh, I know. <laughs> Um, right, so uh, my final tip to show you now, tip number 11, is all about recording again, but this time not um, a screen recording, but a sound recording. It's about creating sound buttons in your links presentations. So um, sound buttons are really uh, useful tools for teachers because it means that the children, when they're interacting with a presentation, can have great fun hearing um, instructions being said to them or just some fun sounds that enhance their um, enjoyment of the presentation or the activity. So um, I've got an activity here that I'd like to enhance with some um, sound buttons. And I'm using these images here as the sound button. And in fact, I've already created one for the blueberries here. So um, this is a phonics activity. So that's all about the sounds that we can hear in the and speak. You need to remember to share screen. Oh, it's shared yeah. at the moment. Sorry, Gary. Oh, no, I uh, totally forgot. I'm making sure I share my. So, here is the activity that I was going to show you. Perfect. And um, it's all about phonics and it's the sound oo. So, those of you that know English well will know that English is a right pain. Uh, in the sense that there are lots of spellings of the same sounds. So here we have oo in moon, oo in flu, and oo in blue, and they're all spelt totally differently. It's a real headache for anyone learning English. So here is a sound button for these blueberries. You can see a little link icon there that shows it's already some kind of action button. 
So when I click on that. Ooh for blue. Hopefully you can hear my daughter there saying ooh for blue. So I need to um, make a sound file for ooh for flu here. And also I, I need an image for my button for the moon. So let's do that first. So I'm going to go to my content area from the plus section here. And in the media search, we have all these websites we can search for. So I've typed in the word moon already. And let's go to clip art and lots of nice images. And I like this one, particularly because it comes without a background. It's a bit large though. No problem, we'll just shrink it down and then we can pop it into place. There we go. So we've got our moon button, our plane button, and we've got the blueberries already sorted. So now we need the sound files. So the two uh, best ways I know of to get sound files um, are either to search for them on the internet or make them yourself. So if we go onto the internet, if we go to uh, type in free sounds in Google, you get all sorts of websites. So we have freesound.org, that's a great one. I use that one a lot. We have Zapsplat, Free SFX, there's all sorts. And you want the ones that are royalty free. So they're totally free for you to use and put into your presentations. So you can find the sound and download it that way. Or if you come to your search area here, you can type in voice recorder, and use the voice recorder app that you should have on your device, or you can download a voice recorder app. So this will load in, and I will be able to use it and create my own file. So uh, let's wait for that to activate. Being rather slow though, all of a sudden. Ah, looks like it doesn't want to work. Let me just close that down and I'll open it up again. Oh, this app has nothing to do with uh, us. It's just totally uh, Windows uh, app. Voice recorder here it is, we've decided to work now. So let's say I want to make a new recording. So I'm going to go for this one here. Are you ready? Ooh, for moon. Stop the recording there. I can now play that recording back. Ooh, for moon. There we go. I can rename it. And this is the second time I've created that. So we'll call it Ooh for Moon 2. And I'll close that down. That goes into a dedicated sound recordings folder on your device and in documents. So now I need to retrieve uh, that Ooh for Moon file. So click on my moon. We go to the three dots here and we want to create a link to that sound file. So instead of selecting a slide to link to, we're going to select file. So in my documents, I have my sound recordings file and I'm looking for my ooh for moon number two, there it is. I'm going to select it and I'm gonna say, okay. So now we've got the little link symbol and when I click on there, ooh for moon. There we go. Let's get a much better voice on my own. So for the aeroplane, we we'll click on the three dots, link. We're going to select a file, sound recordings, and we want ooh for flu. There's the original and the best that my daughter made. Check it's the right link. Say OK. And there we have it. Now, when we want to hear these sound files, the best place for them is in presentation mode. So now we can enjoy the activity and we can click on each of the buttons. Ooh for moon. Ooh for flu. There we go. Now, I have another file um, that we can uh, look at as well. Um, actually, it looks like it's uh, disappeared from my list of files for some reason. That's interesting. I will go to my dashboard and open it up for you because it's a really nice um, use of um, the uh, sound buttons that I can demonstrate for you. Just load this file in. Here we are. So as we go through, I've got a really nice one with lots of sounds on it. Here it is. So doing this activity here, I could hit the drums 
No, it would help if I was in presentation mode. And I've got a clarinet here. Noisy, and I'm hoping you're feeling that this tip is a bit like this than if I was using the trombone and it sounds right. So that is creating sound buttons in links. So I'm just going to stop sharing there and I'm going to pass you back to Jilly with our final tip of the day. Thank you very much, Gary. And I'm just going to share my screen with you all there as well. So hopefully I'll get a little thumbs up that we can see my screen. Perfect. So I'm going to give you a very quick overhaul of how you can use Links Whiteboard just to come up and start writing on straight away. Um, so obviously, You've seen previously that Gareth showed you where you could download uh, the video recorder, which is a great little extra that you can have there. But from the same place, you can also download your links whiteboard from the downloads. Once you've downloaded it onto your device, then you will see a little icon like this little cross at the bottom. Similar to that one up at the top, just a different color. I've got mine pinned into my toolbar because I'm always on it. Um, but it's there and you can just click and you will see this dashboard appear. So we've got six icons. We've got our create, open, browser, games, join and share. You also have the option there to sign in if you would like to sign in. I've already signed in there as well. Um, but it gives you that option to link all your devices together and make so you don't have to keep um, opening and signing into different things as well. So just to show you really quickly, if I click on open, it enables me. I've got my Google Drive linked up there. I've got my OneDrive linked up there and I've got my links cloud there as well. I've also got my PC linked to um, my account and my desktop. So lots of things are linked there. So I'm not having to go searching for those files. They are all there ready for me. It's also got the browser. And again, that's great if you want to do split screen or you want to quickly grab and create some content onto a, onto a canvas. Absolutely great way to use there. I've also got the games. And again, this is by a company called FET. Um, loads of STEM games, like your science, technology and maths games there. Lots of really good interactive ones um, to create for your students. And then you can obviously join and share the work out as well. Um, we have here today, I'm just going to be looking at the create. So if I click on my create, it gives me options of what size canvas I would like to work on. So I'm going to just click on the default one as I would normally do. But if you would prefer to work in a different style, click on the one that you would like to use. So by clicking on create, you can see straight away, I've got a blank canvas up here. I can go to the pen and very quickly, I can just select a pen and start writing away. So whatever it was I wanted to do, whether it was creating a mind map and sharing and doing all that, um, sharing collaboratively our ideas. You can flick between the pens, just give you a slightly different effect there. You can change the thickness, the colors. It's all very easy to use. And as you can see, there's no lag um, from when I write to when I start. So that's how quick and easy you can come up and use the pens. Um, as always, you can set the different pens. So if you didn't want the maths one and potentially wanted a bit of text, you can have those set for your preference. The only one that's slightly different is the eraser at the end. So it just gives you the option of the size and then you can just quickly rub out what you'd like to do. So a few things about the toolbar here. So down at the bottom, will it let me move that up? Bear with me one moment, it just pops it open. Um, I have the hamburger menu there. So if I want to start presenting, if I do want to do that, I can go there. I can save obviously what's on the board there as well. So then next to the hamburger stacker menu, 
I've got, it tells me the number of pages I have. So at the moment, I just have one page. If I want to add, add an additional page, I can just click there and you'll notice the numbers are going up. I can use the arrows next to it to navigate through. So page one or four, two, three. Um, or if I wanted to see all of them as a thumb view, a thumbnail view, I can click on the little double rectangle there. And you can see I've got my different pages there. What I can also do if I don't want to have a plain white background, I can just click on the little hamburger menu within the thumbnail and I can very quickly change to a different color background. Now it will allow me in background options to apply to all the pages, or it might just be to the new pages that I put in. So if I say use an all new pages, then when I insert a page, there you go, it is coming in blue straight away. You can also uh, copy and paste the page. So, or you can duplicate the page as well. So lots of options there for you to use. I'll just do a couple of different colors there so we can see the different pages. Now it's really easy as well if you want to reorder them. Again, the little arrow down here at the bottom, you can just move them. It's really quick and easy to do and really um, fluid. I'm not going to talk about the little link here because Gareth's spoken about that in previous ones where we're talking about linking those pages and zooming in to make it really active. But this is just a quick general overhaul on how quick and easy it is to come up and write on the board. So a little bit about our toolbars here again. So we've had a little look at some of the pens already today. We've had a look at those line pens. We had a little look at um, the text pen. Uh, we've had a little look at those fine tip and the ink. Now the laser pen is really a nice one. So say for example, you wanted to highlight an area, you can highlight it, circle it to really draw people in and then it will automatically disappear. So it's not that permanent picture there. We also have the rainbow pen, which is great if you are wanting to improve children's handwriting. Um, I found this a great one to use. Say, for example, if I write hello and I don't manage to join up all my letters, so let's see if I write hello, I can join my L's, but not my O. You can see that it's lots of different multicolors. If I'd written it and had been able to join it all up, that word will appear in one colour. So it's like, yes, I can join, I can see I've joined all my letters up. I quite like it being different colours though. And as a child or a student, it might be like, well, I like multicolored writing. So they could then be writing in the animated rainbow pen. And this time when they write, as long as it's all joined up, the whole word will change colour together. You can see it's all um, joined and it changes together so you can tell that they are making progress with their writing. So looking at the text one, you can write, if I just write welcome, it will then convert it into a pre-selected text that I've already chosen. I can then go back into that and I can edit it because it's an editable text box. I can change the color of it if I wanted to, um, and I can highlight it lots of different features there as well. A few of the other tools in here in our toolbar with the pens, we've got the shape recognition. So that will recognize our basic shape, a bit like a circle. It will pick that up and turn it into a circle maybe a square down here at the bottom. So it recognizes those basic shapes as well. And again, when you click on those, you can move those around the screen. You can use the nodes to resize them. So if you are wanting to do any mind maps or anything, those are all there very quick and easy for you to use as well. You've also got just the general text down here. So if I click on it, I've got some three preset um, 
fonts in there that I've chosen from my computer. You can choose whichever ones you would like by clicking on the clog, cog. Um, it will allow you, it'll pull up all the fonts that you've got within your computer and you can set it to whatever size and the colors that you would like to. So if I just go back and then you also have the cropping tools so you can fill pages in, you can uh, remove parts of shapes. You've even got a block highlighter so you can highlight some text really quickly. And then we've looked at these ones before where you've got the crop so you can just copy a little bit. You can freehand crop and you can split the shape and the knife. So if I just do a very quick freehand crop, I'll just draw around that part there. You can see it will quickly duplicate that, what I've drawn just there and then you can use some of the others so you could use a knife you could split that apart as well there so if I click on that knife and just do my little split you can see you can split that word up or however an image you would like to do there as well and then the final little tool there on the bottom of our toolbar in the center is that little plus button if I click on that, you can go into your page options where, again, you can change the color of pages and things. Um, you can edit your background, so whether you're sending things to the background that you don't want people to mess with and move around. Um, you can also insert some shapes. And here is your content. So remember, you can very quickly and easily add some content here by just, this is from our internet. So as you all know, I love the Gruffalo. So if I just show you very quickly that you can just pull images up from the search and then you can just resize them quickly and easily using those nodes. And it's as easy as that to add your content. We also have that local content. So previously in the graphs, I had a background so I can drop my squares. You can have lines, lots and lots of different backgrounds there and content. You've also got lots of mathematical tools, resources there. Um, and also you can have a bank of your own resources that you may have created or ones that you would use regularly. We also have just the final part on our toolbar down here on the right hand side you've got the undo button and the redo. And if you didn't want that at all, you can just click on it and you can press the little bin. I'd like the Gruffalo to remain on my screen, however, so I will click on the undo. But that's just a very quick sort of general how easy it is to come up, either just write on it like a whiteboard or grab a little bit of content in there as well. So I hope you've enjoyed all our tips today. Um, I'm going to stop sharing with you now and hopefully we will see you in the future, which would be really good. If you do have any questions, um, please feel free to drop it into the chat um, and we're more than happy to answer those now for you. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, that, that was great as usual. So I just thought we should go over the things uh, that we've been over every week. So how, how much is links and is there an ongoing subscription cost? Uh, so no ongoing subscription cost and it's totally free uh, from all good app stores. So download it onto your many devices and you can use it totally for free. Brilliant. Uh, what sort of files can it open? So it can open lots and lots of different files. It can open up your PowerPoints, your Google Slides. Um, but most important, from a teacher's perspective, being a, a teacher myself with new boards, um, you want to be able to open up your past planning. And often it might be in a snark smart notebook file or it might be in an active inspire file now both these are editable within the link software and um, the active inspire you can edit all the text and um, the text boxes are completely editable you can move all the images around in smart notebook again everything you can move around however at the moment the text box comes on as an image so you can't edit and change that text 
However, the developers are working really hard. Um, so hopefully by the end of this year, they will be fully editable. So you'll be able to edit the text in smart notebooks as well. Brilliant. Uh, thank you very much. Um, oh, and is there any uh, guides available to learn more about Link's whiteboard? Um, yeah, you can go on to um, our website and there are guides on there. You can go onto our YouTube channel. There's there are many videos of us using Link's whiteboard. And there's also our Clever Touch Academy where you can enroll on courses and train yourself on how to use Link's. Or you can get in touch with us with your contact at Clever Touch or directly to us, jilly.fraser at clevertouch.com or gareth.middleton at clevertouch.com. And we'll send you some files if you'd like, some example files that you can try out or showcase to um, colleagues and, and, and so on. Brilliant. Thank you very much. If there are no uh, further questions, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for coming and thank you to our wonderful presenters who have done an amazing job over the past three weeks. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you for coming so and goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.